Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing well today. Hope you can hear me okay. I um, I'm not feeling very well today, but um, I really wanted to come on and put this message out there. Uh, on the sixth, on January sixth, two thousand and twenty-two. The Lord gave me a message while I was in my prayer closet. And he was speaking about seeing judgment with my eyes coming on the world. And how it would continue to pick up speed. But he said those who abide in him would be protected. He said it would not come near my home, but I would see it. The next morning, on the 7th, I had a dream, and the Lord confirmed what he told me in the message the day before while I was in prayer. Um, in my dream, my husband was outside watching as a tornado was close to our home. I walked outside, and I could see it, and I grabbed out my phone, and I began recording it. And I hit zoom just a little tiny bit. Well, we could see it pretty good, but I just wanted to get a close-up of it. And I had this knowing that it wasn't coming near our home. That's why I was comfortable just sitting recording it. And it tore into um, some buildings around us and some homes. And when it was finished, I then, uh, my husband and I ran to these homes and again, um, making sure everybody was okay. People were afraid to come out of their basements. We were telling them it was all right. Um, I then had a conversation. If anybody gets anything else from this, I just know it was all spiritual, and I know it was from the Lord. Um, anyways, I had a knowing also that we lived in a mountain. We lived in the mountains. And uh, so after we were helping... These people come out of their basements. I'm speaking to a woman about uh, cats and dogs there for a minute. And then I went outside and it seemed as though I was on a front porch. There was a man out there who in my dream uh, represented, seemed like it represented a stepbrother that I used to have before my stepdad died. And his name was Tim. I didn't, I still didn't look up the meaning of his name. But he was out there and said that he shot a stray dog because it looked like it was sick. It was on the side of the porch. I went and looked down there, and at first it looked like a big black dog with long ears, but it ended up being a girl with black hair. She got up. He really wasn't paying attention, and I could tell she was shot in the foot. So I began walking with her. I was going to walk with her to the hospital, which I knew was a pretty straight shot, and I believe it represented uh, we were in Bay City, and we had to walk down the road. We lived. I lived really close to the hospital when, when I lived in Bay City. Um, so we were walking straight, and I got the feeling that maybe I should hide her out for a little while so he couldn't find her, because if he looked down the road, he would see her walking, and I didn't, you know. So I tried hiding with her underneath the porch for a little while and let some time pass, but she didn't really want to hide. She came out of the area I was trying to get her to hide in, and there was two men out there. One of the men, his name was Ben, which I believe uh, ben, Benjamin means right side of the father, he ran up to me. He was so happy to see me. He hadn't seen me in a really long time. I used to work with him at Cracker Barrel. Um, he ran up and hugged me and picked me up off the ground. And he ended up carrying me into this house. I made a statement to him that I was married. He made a statement to me that he was married. I didn't stay there long. I just felt like I needed to get out of there. I walked out of there. And as soon as I walked out, I had the ability to fly. I was able to fly, not really high like into the sky, but high enough to like go above trees. And uh, <clears throat> there was two girls that were there that were so in awe of how I could fly. And they were asking, they were asking me how I was able to fly. And I told them that Jesus gave me the ability to fly. After that, I was looking around, and I realized that I was down. I wasn't up in the mountains. I was down, and I was trying to figure out where I was because somewhere along the line, I had, like, ended up getting, uh, I don't know. I was just, like, lost my direction of where I was going or where I needed to go to go back up the mountain. And uh, I just started flying again, and uh, I ended up waking up. So it took me 
part of the day. I knew that was from the Lord. I've had dreams about flying my whole entire life. It's been a long time since I've flown in a dream. So I was really excited to have flown in this dream. I always know it's something spiritual from the Lord. I've had this ever since I was a little girl. But uh, later on in the day, I realized that um, <clears throat> the Lord had shown me that that tornado represented the judgments that's coming. But uh, I would see it with my eyes, but it wouldn't come near my house. So I just wanted to put this word out there. If you're abiding in the presence of the Lord... Your home is going to be protected. Um, I don't know what kind of judgments. I'm assuming it's going to be weather judgments. We're going to start seeing the Lord uh, putting the hammer down more on some weather events. And, you know, it's always to bring people to repentance. So even if you're struggling and you lost your way and you just you're bound down by sin, I just really urge you to really reach out to Jesus because he cares for you. And it's not too late. He's... So merciful and kind. You know, I've been reading Ezekiel. And, you know, he shares about <clears throat> his anger. And even reading in a chapter the other day, I believe it was chapter 12, and he was talking about, you know, Israel <clears throat> being a prostitute and how most prostitutes make money from their services, but she pays people. She prostitutes herself to people and then pays them and gives them rewards. You know, and he was talking about how upset that he is and how, you know, they they pour their children's blood out to these false idols and how he's so mad about it. But even, you know, reading to the end of the chapter, he, he was just talking about how he would punish them and then his anger would release up. You know, God is so good. He is so good. And he's so forgiving and he's so merciful. Not one of us deserves mercy and forgiveness because we've all fall short of the glory of God but when we turn to him and we confess our sin and we ask him to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and help us to walk holy spotless and blameless man we put our eyes to him he just moves mountains for us and we can see him in our daily life so if you're struggling I really urge you to lay the sin down lay it at his feet and give it to him and ask him to give you the strength to get up and just move forward and uh, he'll help you through it. We're not doing anything alone. He knows the season that we're in right now in our life. And he wants to be your strength. So give it to him. I'm going to go. I hope that you all are doing well and staying healthy. I really urge you guys to be up on your vitamins. I truly believe, um, even as awful as I feel um, today, I really believe that I would feel worse if I wasn't on vitamins. So I still... And, you know, I'm still giving God honor, glory, and praise. Even through not feeling good, my head just feels congested. But I could feel worse. I could feel worse because I've had worse colds. So I'm still giving him honor, glory, and praise. If you could pray for me, that would be appreciated. Um, I think it was something that was just going in the house. The kids had the fever for the one day. Uh, I see a little bit of a runny nose. I haven't really noticed any, any, you know, much from them. I had a sore throat for a couple of days, just for like the first few minutes that I got out of bed. I think for like three or four days, and then I was fine. And yesterday, towards the end of the day, I realized that I started blowing my nose a little. And then uh, I woke up this morning and <clears throat> feel congested, so I'm not sure. But... <clears throat> Anyways, I hope you all are blessed. Um, continue to, you know, ask God's will for your life and ask him to lead you and guide you. And he will. All right. Until next time.